Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we show you how to store your message logs in the SQL Server with Integration Host. Here we can see Integration Host using the default in-memory login. It's fast, it's easy, it persists to disk when stopped, it just works. The problem is it's limited to a thousand items per workflow. Why is this? Well, it can eat your memory. An example like this, no problem at all. But if you have a dozen large workflows, you'll start to notice it. The solution? Why not have your logs written off to SQL Server? Configure this and you can securely record a truly enormous message history. Search for it seamlessly while still experiencing near instantaneous performance. Let me show you the steps to set it up and take you through both the options and recommendations you'll need to know. To start with, which flavor of SQL Server are we talking about? SQL Enterprise, SQL Express, SQL Azure, well, they are all supported. It just depends on your existing environment, budget, and location. But to keep it simple, I'm going to be demonstrating with the free SQL Express version. So let's take a look. Along with SQL, I've also installed SQL Server Management Studio, popularly known as SSMS, to manage the setup. I've connected to the database as the default user, and we're ready to go. Let's start by creating a new database for the login. Right click on databases, select new database. We'll call this one hl 7 soup And I'll just accept all the other defaults and click OK to create the database. Now we need to create a user to access this. It's worth noting that Integration Host runs as a Windows service, which means it's not running as the current logged in user onto Windows. So let's create a SQL user for authentication. To start with, we've got to enable this in SQL Server. So I right click on the connection, select properties, head over to security, and select SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode. Click OK. It's now prompting me to restart SQL Server, so I'll do that. Right click up here and click Restart. Then accept that you wanted to restart. And so now let's create our user. So I'll go to the Securities tab, add a new login, and we need to give it a name. I'll just call it hl 7 soup and select SQL Authentication. We'll give a simple password for this test, ABC123, ABC123. Therefore not enforce the password policy. I'll set the default database to our hr 7 soup database. And I will go to the user mapping and map the user to our hr 7 soup database. And we'll create it as a database owner. Requires permission to create the database, so that's why we're setting it as database owner. But once it's been configured, it won't have to do that again. We're now ready for integration host to connect, so let's head over to the client. Head up to the settings and select the message logs tab. Here we can see our default in-memory logging settings, but we're going to change that across to SQL Server Database. And now it requires a connection string to the database that we want to install it into. We can use one of the examples here to help us create our connection string. And I can just select the top one by double clicking and now we can replace the values in it with the appropriate ones from the server. Quickly jumping back to SQL Server, we can see our system was called XPS 17 SQL Express. So I'll enter that in. And we called our database HR7 Soup. The user ID was also HR7 Soup. And the password was ABC123. Now I just have to test my connection string. It's telling us that it found the database, but there were no tables installed on it. So we want to install them now, so we're gonna click yes. Right, that's it. The tables have been now populated, so we can now continue. And that's it, we're now running against our SQL Server database. So now if I refresh the logs, those are now being taken from the SQL Server database instead of out of memory. You'll see it's still very fast to click around. Now that we have a much larger database available to us, searching by date becomes a lot more important. And just quickly, there's a couple of tricks to searching by date if you want to take advantage of them. Say you wanted to search everything from 9 a.m. this morning, I can just type 9 a.m. up here. And notice when I tab off, it automatically puts today's date with 9 a.m. in the morning. You can do a similar thing by putting in a date. If you want to go to the 5th of the 5th entirely, you could shortcut your dates just by typing that. And again, tabbing off will fill out the rest of the details. Take advantage of these as well as you want. And when you're searching by dates, it's often helpful to know that you can adjust between ascending or descending data in your database. Looking back on the history for errors can obviously be very helpful for your system. Let's start by creating a few errors in our system by stopping this workflow. Okay, now these ones that are calling it are going to start crashing. 
And so now we can jump between all the errored messages, all the successful messages, or all the messages with the simple click of a radio button. If I restart this, it'll start recovering again. You can see quite quickly that the errors have moved off the screen, but I can still access them at any time I like using the errors button, or just viewing the successful ones, or once again, all messages. Searching within the text is a little bit different when using the database logs. If I copy the patient's ID and search within the message logs, you'll notice it doesn't show. Why is this? Well, with the in-memory one, it can search the entire text, but now that it's in the database, it needs to take advantage of indexes. And since you can't index every part of an entire message, instead, it's now the message variables which are searchable. So let's alter this workflow pattern so I can search for patient. Double click to edit. And I've got a workflow with a default message template. Any variables I create within this workflow will then be searchable. So if I want to search for a patient ID, why not do that at the beginning of the workflow? That's something that's coming into our system. I head to the filters and then I can expand out the filter transformers. Anything that I drag into the binding field will automatically be added as a variable in the system. So now we've got the patient ID number is going in as a variable. I could also take out any other value that I wanted. Commonly the message types, I might want to search by those. And now I can save my workflow and the searching for the text will now include that in the details. Now expand that out, grab a patient's ID, put that into the search criteria, and we instantly get back the results that we need. Again, very fast, just like the in-memory one. You've just got to make sure that you set up your variables to take advantage. Resetting the message logs is very similar to before. We right-click on a workflow, go to its statistics, and we can choose to clear its counts or its log items, or just clear all. It's going to prompt, are you sure? And we say yes. You'll notice that the count has gone back to zero. And if I was to refresh here on the message logs, they have also been truncated. It's important to know that if you've got millions of records, the clearing of the logs might actually take some time. So it might take a few seconds for it to actually update into the integration host client while the server does its job, but it will eventually reset. And it's also important to understand that when you clear the logs, it doesn't actually delete the records from the database. All it's doing is shifting the data so that it's no longer visible to that workflow. So that leads me to the purging of the database and other important settings. So let's head back into the configuration, the message logs tab. And we can see here that by default, that it's configured to purge any messages older than 30 days old. I'm free to adjust that, make that longer or shorter. It's up to me what settings I'd like to have. But since I'm using SQL Express, it may well be worth dropping that figure down to a shorter period. As a rule of thumb, it takes about one gigabyte of disk space per 100,000 records logged. And as SQL Express only allows for 10 gigabytes of our maximum for its database, if you're logging in excess of 10,000 records per day, you're probably going to want to reduce the number of days in your logs. If you've got a enterprise sized database, you're more than welcome to expand that out to whatever figure that you wish. Another useful setting is writing the records in batches. It's on by default. The logs are only updated every one second by default. This is very helpful if you have a high throughput, particularly if you're sending that data to SQL Azure and you want to batch all the information together that it sends to the server so it doesn't make so many calls. If you uncheck it, it will stop batching and write records to the database as soon as that log information is created. This might be a little bit slower, but it does mean, for instance, if the system is turned off in the middle of processing, you'll get the most up-to-date logs. It won't be delayed by one second any further. But for most, we recommend turning on the batching. It is faster. There's a few other data options that are worth covering. You do have the option to specify which activities or variables that are going to be logged. This can be particularly helpful if you're storing large data in variables and you don't want that to be indexed for the searching. So for instance, if I was storing an entire message in a variable, you know, why index that? That has no value to me. So I can just say uh, log all but this excluded variable. And if I know the name, it's called my message, for instance. That would now be excluded from the database and would reduce the database size. If this video has helped you, then please consider subscribing or liking our video on YouTube. Any comments are always welcome and contact HR7 Super Support if you have any queries. Thank you.